I'm Alan Taylor. My buddy Scott Duffy and I are in search of the best burger in America. Each month we visit a new city to try some of the top restaurants, pubs, and brew houses while sitting down for a candid conversation with some of the top entrepreneurs, athletes, entertainers, and celebrities. I don't know about you, but I love talking business over a burger. Welcome to Business and Burgers. Today we're back at Star Mill to try another amazing slider from Black Sliders. Joining us are Randy Garn and Nick Greer of Scipio, an app that helps businesses reach their customers through personalized text messaging. Buddy, since college, Randy and Nick prove that you can go into business with your friends and be successful. In fact, they've made it their mission to help their clients cultivate authentic relationships that will help keep their customers engaged and business booming. All right, Nick, Randy, awesome to see you guys today. I want to introduce you to my friend, Alan Taylor. Man. Good to see you guys. Yeah, Thank I'm you for letting so us work in yes. your space. Lots of work. All right, Lots so here's the deal. So I was here last year, this time last year, yeah. and the star mill was like a disaster. It was old working mill, right? It had been closed for years. It was all wood and busted up and broken down. You guys came in, you transformed it into what now is the, like, this is amazing. Yeah, thank you. you. Do? What, what was the vision that yeah. you had? I don't know, we're still trying to figure out that vision, yeah. you know, but uh, four and a half years ago, came in, saw this building, and it was obvious it had to come back to life. And it was obvious there was a legacy that was created here. You know, the building spoke to you, uh, said what it should be, and you could hear um, what it ought to be. And with time and with a lot of effort, um, it turned into what it is today. So we walked in this morning. Yeah. And we walked in on the most interesting conversation you were having. You guys were all standing around and... Yep you had this like company meeting all standing up and I, I thought maybe it was something special for us but evidently this is what you guys do. Really that's what it is, is a power stand. 15 minutes gathered around, let's talk. You're not sitting down and we're standing up. The entire uh, company. The entire company and we stand around and we talk about what's going on. Let's talk about our wins. Let's talk about our improvements and let's train on one issue and it's powerful. It's a lot of fun just to walk through that process. I mean we're up front with our employees. There are struggles especially when you're starting a company and we're completely open with that and say, okay, here's the struggles. How do we, how do we grow from here? How do we keep looking at out? Not, not focus on what went wrong, but what's going right. I thought what was, what was really killer was the amount of energy yeah. in the room and in the group. People were cheering, they were rooting for each other, yeah. right? Um, people from different departments, every department got to speak yeah. and share highlights about progress that they were making in their group. You know, I actually felt good. I thought, I, I want to be involved with this. It was, I it mean, was, the energy was We infectious. are taking applications. Yeah, so. I don't apply. I'm just saying. I mean, just you're going to have to yeah. send me an okay. offer. Okay. <laughs> you know, what was interesting is when you were talking about, I asked you about the vision that you had for this. You said that it, it almost like sounded like it happened organically. Is that the way you approach business as well? Yes, 100%. Um, I think the problem though with uh, entrepreneurs and businesses is you, why there's so many entrepreneurs as opposed to the entrepreneurs is the fact they want to know from A to Z. Yeah. You don't yeah. know A to Z. That's a great point. But if you, you don't go, know A to B some days. But you that's know true. what? That's okay. As long as you're progressing to B, yeah. then you're going to figure out how you get to C. Mm -hmm. And there are some days you have those aha moments. You're like, wait a minute. Because I saw a victory today, it gave me confidence to get that victory tomorrow. My company is made up of a lot of young people. Yeah. Right. They don't get to understand what it's like to be an entrepreneur, right. to just be happy to get from A to paycheck B. Yeah. But how do I talk to my employees? How do I explain to them, I'm an entrepreneur? Too often, um, as human beings, we look at, um, we have a job, and I call that the yeah. three-letter swear word. Yeah. This is not a, just a J-O-B. If you're going through the motions, then we're failing as a company because we're failing you and you're not growing. Sometimes in small companies, what entrepreneurs want to do is they want to hide yes. the losses. Yes. Right. And they don't want to shout those out loud. So how, how do they feel confident enough or safe enough to be able to share? It's because they feel that yeah. love from you that you're not asking them you know, out of, hey, your job's on the line, or hey, you know what, give me the answers I'm looking for. It's like, no, I love you, mm -hmm. but how do we do this together? Because I need you. Mm -hmm. Help me help you help us. Does that cross a line with employees? Are you asking them to go the extra mile, which doesn't fit into the employee handbook? First, it's not, I need you. What can I do for you? Or what, it's like, let me help you. And guess what, that's in return, gets you what you need from them. Yeah. So being vulnerable. vulnerable. It's being vulnerable yeah. in that situation. Ooh. One of the things that I've always liked teaching, I read a book called The No Complaining Rule. They can come with you com uh, with a complaint or an issue or a struggle, 
but they need to come with a solution. Right. The hardest thing for people to really do is everybody wants just direction. You teach your employees how to think and to be innovative and create ideation, you're gonna have a really, really good company. So the bad news is, yeah. I'm hungry. Okay. The good news is, the burgers are on their way. Love All right, it. Perfect. <laughs> Today we're breaking the rules to try Black Slider's most popular sandwich, Scooter's Southern Fried Chicken Slider. It may not be technically a burger, but it tastes amazing nonetheless. This slider proves the power of simplicity. Perfect fried chicken paired only with ranch dressing and romaine lettuce on a Tuscan bun. Simply perfection. You just mentioned how hard it was to get Aaron and Black Sliders over today because of how booked they are, but you've got a great relationship. And I've never met anybody as amazing at building relationships as you. My question is, how do you build a great business network? Really, you can't do business without, without having a relationship with somebody. Um, it's, I, I actually look at relationships as almost like a bank account. You can't, if you don't put things in, if you don't put money in, you can't go withdraw it. It's about having true experience with people. If you go out and you do things with people, and never talk about business and build a real genuine relationship with them and do things, the law of reciprocity, it will come back to you. It, they have to know what your true <clears throat> intent is. I mean, it's yeah. easy to read through yeah. and understand what person's, yeah. you know, what one person's intent may be in that relationship. And a lot of times it's to get personal gain. Money should never lead, it should only follow. But a lot of times in relationships, the money is leading instead of following. Okay, so yeah. let's say I'm building a, whatever kind of company it is, a widget company and I want to build relationships within my industry. So I want to take people out to do cool things and have experiences. How do I make that, I guess, how do I make that not seem ungenuine, you know what I mean, disingenuous? Yeah. You've got to transfer value, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times I see in relationships is like, what can I do for them and help them? But that also takes time. It does. Relationships take time and especially relationships where you're actually doing business together are the best kind of relationships. I love doing business with my friend and I try yeah. and honor that relationship, but whether it's just Scott or the big company Microsoft or the big car companies we work with or yeah. whatever it is, we get to a point in our lives where we, we, we want to use brands that we trust, we want, to, we want to deal with people that we love because then we're investing in that relationship and you know we only have one life and you better enjoy what you're doing yeah. And you better be able to stand behind what you're doing, even if you lose money to keep your word. Yeah. At what point and how do you ask for the order? There's great networkers, mm -hmm. but they never get the order. That's right. I think the biggest thing is, is communication. One thing a good friend of mine taught me years ago is that there's three things. Understand, agree, and commit. U-A-C. If you get those things right, if, you, if they fully understand, then you can agree to it, then you can commit. Because a lot of people jump to commitment before they fully agree, understand mm -hmm. what's going on yeah. because of the relationship, right? To have great, meaningful, transactional relationships, you've gotta be good at being able to understand, agree, and fully commit mm -hmm. that the expectations are aligned. In reality, you've gotta look at every relationship that you have and ask the question, why? Why am I connected to you, Scott? Why? Because you deepen that in that type of, um, I guess, that perception when you're going into a relationship. And when you ask yourself that question, it's amazing what comes out of that. Yeah. I asked myself 18 years ago, why did I meet this guy? Yeah. The little man with the plan, you know, <laughs> running around campus. You know, <laughs> a little ball. Slogan. Yeah, a little, <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously, a ball of energy. But why? And we always wanted to work together. Dave Norton, our other partner, why? Why were we such good friends? Like, why do we all get along? And also now this company, creating it together, is like, oh, I see what we were being prepared to do now, today. I'm always asked, if you could go and change one thing about how you've lived your life, or at least in business, right, um, what would you do? And the, the biggest mistake that I think I've made in my career is that I thought that what it took to be successful was outworking everyone else. Mm -hmm. But the thing over time that I've learned is really, it's all about relationships, yeah. particularly the older that we get. And I think that's part of what you're talking about is yeah. just getting to know people. Well, I mean, think about this for a second. <clears throat> In our day and age, we talk about social media yeah. and we're talking about hundreds, if not thousands, tens of thousands of yeah. relationships, connections. Those aren't real relationships. It has to be deeper. That's just one tool. That's one tool, toolbox. but you know what? What it really matters, like what Randy does well, and I know what you do well, Scott, is 
it's deepening, getting those roots down into those relationships. I think it used to be that, you know, we do business and we build relationships face to face. It was all personal. Yeah. And then came the telephone and then came the internet and email and internet marketing and email marketing. I'm finding that email marketing um, is getting a lot tougher, staying in touch with people, having contact. And I'm finding a lot of power behind text. Yeah. And I was hoping you guys could share a little bit about Scipio and kind of where you see text going um, in terms of relationship management. Texting is a powerful tool. Now, granted, we have to be very careful as yeah. businesses to not abuse what texting can do. Everything you can do in email via text now through our service. And so I could send 3,000 people that message and it be authentic and come to them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. One thing that I try to teach people is to give, do three gives and then an ask. Mm -hmm. Don't always be do, being transactional. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, gotta, you gotta deliver content, you gotta deliver you know, things that will be benefits to them, and then you can give an ask. Sure. But again, that comes back to building relationships. So three gives and an ask. I think personalizing it too to them. Yeah. You know, if you, if you have a bunch of, um, I mean, links on there and, and it's very robotic and it's very not so personal, mm -hmm. and they feel, they see right through it. We talk about the intent of relationship. Yeah. You can see the intent is only for you to gain mm -hmm. and not for them right. to get or gain. You know, from the very beginning, we talked about this old mill built in 1888. You talk about the old and the new. Mm -hmm. And um, there is beauty with the old. You look about technology today. Technology is the new, cutting edge, always changing, always adapting. Today, it's different than it was yesterday. But relationships, they're old. The way that relationships are made and they're had, it's old. It's not through technology, meaning those deep relationships are only helped through technology, but not technology alone. Mm -hmm. It has to be used with those old-fashioned old-fashioned ways. I am so pumped for entrepreneurship for 2017 and looking forward. We're going to see things accelerate so fast. So my final thought is, is that as an entrepreneur, get gritty. Think of ways what we're going to change this, this country, this world. And uh, I'm, I'm, it's, just, it's just a great time to be alive. So, That's awesome. Thank you. Great it. meeting you. Thanks, brother. You're awesome. Man, you you see you so Scott, <laughs> always good, my man. Thank Thanks, you. guys. It is a team of you. Randy and Nick gave us some great insight into the power of building genuine relationships, and they left us with some great food for thought. You don't have to know A to Z, just take one step at a time. Teach your employees to think and be innovative, and you will have a great company. In business relationships, money should never leave, money should follow. Next time on Business and Burgers, we sit down with Rachel Hersher, founder of Influencer Network and Social Tools Dashboard, socialboost.com, and founder and publisher of Today's Mama, a nationwide network of mom bloggers. Rachel has been recognized as one of Utah Business Magazine's 30 Women to Watch and one of the top five CEOs to watch on Twitter by Business Week Magazine. She joins us at Edge Steakhouse for the most decadent, most extravagant, most indulgent burger we've ever had on the show. That's next time, right here on Business and Burgers. Check out more episodes of Business and Burgers and our B&B blog at our website, businessandburgers.com. And don't forget, visit Business and Burgers on Facebook and give us a big thumbs up. See you next time, right here on Business and Burgers.